Morning, Pastor. Morning, Thomas, Dave, Kiran. Hope you all had a good uh, weekend. Aaron, Kanan, Neelam. Uh, welcome, everyone. So let's pray. Uh, yeah, let's pray and start. Uh, no problem, Dave. I was just uh, asking everybody. Uh, how was the weekend? And I was just wanting to know if uh, uh, you started meeting in person there in Kathmandu or other services still online. No, sir. Uh, we are still in lockdown. I mean, a kind of lockdown. Okay. So we are not allowed to gather still. So we are still on... Uh, our services are seen on online. Online, okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Okay, let's pray. I will get started. Um, Kiran, can you please pray and then we will start? Yes, sir. Father God, we just come before your throne once again, Father God. Father God, thanking you for everything, Father God. Father God, bless once again each of everyone, Father God. Father God, give your wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Father God, to that subject, Father God, that we can serve our Jerusalem and all places, Father God. Father God, give revelation more, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, for everything. Upcoming time, I'm just submitting to your hand, Father God. You just take care of everything. Thanking you. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Good morning, everyone, once again. Uh, welcome. Uh, we are continuing our learning about uh, urban church planting. And um, we're just sharing with you, you know, some of the practical things that um, uh, we went through or learned along the way, uh, uh, mainly in the work that's being done in Bangalore. Of course, some of the things, you know, we learn by observation, we learn from watching other churches, other ministries doing work, or we can also learn through reading some other material that's put out uh, from the experiences of people. But uh, a lot, lot, of, lot of things you learn as you just keep doing or do the things that God's called you to do. So. Our goal here in this course is just to share a lot of this so that um, uh, you can take it and use it, uh, you know, whichever city or whichever place uh, God has uh, pl put you in or where you may go and start a church or where you may go and uh, start some sort of a Christian ministry. It doesn't always have to be a local church. It could be something else. Uh, a specialized type of uh, Christian ministry. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and share the uh, PDF. We are still in uh, uh, the second section where we are talking about um, uh, the practical side of uh, urban church planting or urban ministry. And um, we started talking about uh, strategies that is... Uh, just developing methods or means by which we would reach people in our cities or in our you know local context where maybe you may be in a town a small town you may be in a medium sized city you may be in a very big city yeah so we have to develop strategies uh, depending on where we are doing the work um we just laid a little uh, you know biblical foundation we went through a few scriptures uh, to uh, look at, you know, how we would, what are some of the things to keep in mind uh, as we go about, uh, let me just, yeah, as we go about uh, uh, developing strategies. We said things like we don't want to intentionally offend people. Uh, we want to make sure that um, the ministry is not blamed in any way. And uh, one more thing that I just wanted to, uh, uh, address here is uh, we uh, is the issue of uh, uh, civil rights, civil law, uh, and and we will run run into this uh, uh, in many cities, many parts of the world. That means how do we relate to you know what if there is a law that says uh, in this city you are not supposed to 
you know, uh, preach the gospel, right? Uh, or, uh, yeah, so let's say you, you go into a country or you go into a city that says uh, we forbid preaching the gospel. Well, uh, how do we approach those things? I just want to mention a little bit there, and then we will talk about strategies. Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. Somebody could read that for us. Um, Acts 4, 18 to 20. Somebody could read that. Acts chapter 4, 18 to 20, maybe Siddharth, you can read it. Yes. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Mm. Thank you. So here's just one example, and you'll find this throughout the book of Acts, where uh, there was opposition. And in this case, they were the religious leaders who said, you know, don't preach and teach in the name of Jesus. So there was some sort of threatening and all of that. Now, uh, how did Peter and John respond? They said, look, we have to obey God more than we obey man. God has told us to go preach the gospel. And people may have their own, you know, rules. And don't preach and don't do this and don't do that. So Jesus has commissioned us to go preach. So we will preach even if we are told not to. Uh, nobody can stop us from, you know, raising our voice or, uh, you know, using means and methods to proclaim Jesus. However, what we must be careful is don't do it uh, uh, without, I mean, don't do it on uh, on property or on time or uh, without, you know, let me put it like this, we do it in a way that without violating um, time and space, property and time that does not belong to us. For example, if you're in your home, of course, in your home, you can talk about Jesus. And, you know, if somebody comes into your home, you can share about Jesus. It's your space. You are there. And, uh, you know, nobody can dictate your conversation with people. And, of course, in your own room. You know. But if uh, if there is a law in the land that says, you know, uh, 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 you're not supposed to preach, or you must not supposed to give out handbills, or you're not allowed to give out tracts on in public areas, which is basically government property or in public spaces. Okay, follow that rule. Uh, you know, so you don't go there in a public space or go into a mall or go into a, a space where they said you're not supposed to do it. Okay, you follow that rule. But that doesn't prevent us from you know, inviting people to our home or inviting people to you know, a, a common space where we can have a conversation or, you know, those kind of things. You can still preach the gospel, but the point I want to get across is nobody can stop, nobody stop, is going to stop us from preaching the gospel. We can still do it. Just don't do it in the spaces that they said that the law of the land forbids us from doing it yeah, or in the manner in which they forbid us. Like if they say, don't give out tracts. Okay, fine. We won't give out tracts, but there are other ways to proclaim the gospel. There are other ways that we can share Jesus or there are other spaces where we can, you know, uh, share the gospel. So we are respectful of those kinds of things. Um, but, uh, you know, in our personal spaces, we always have the freedom uh, to share the gospel. So keep that in mind. And then also the other thing is we don't want to hurt the sentiments of other people um, or other, you know, other religions. You know, we, we are respectful of people. So don't um, say things and do things that provoke uh, other religions or people of uh, other beliefs. You know, we, we do it in a loving way. We do it in a very positive way that this is the gospel, but don't do it in a way that's hurtful uh, to other people. So just uh, these are some guidelines, biblical guidelines we keep in mind 
as we uh, uh, start to develop strategies. Just to recap very quickly, from 1 Corinthians 9, we said that we want to you know, be relevant to people. We want to step into their worlds. Uh, we saw what Paul did. From 1 Corinthians 10, we said uh, we don't want to intentionally offend people. We want to do things in a way that draws them. From 2 Corinthians 6, we said we don't want to do things in a, uh, in a way that that would bring any blame to the ministry. And from Acts 4, 18 to 20, we said that, okay, if there are restrictions, okay, follow those restrictions, but we don't stop preaching the gospel in spaces and in ways that, you know, we can do uh, it without violating what the law of the land uh, requires and without hurting the sentiments of other people. All right, so with that framework, with that idea, uh, you know, what, what we want to do is, one of the ways that we go about developing strategies uh, is to, uh, you know, to. Uh, I mean, there are several ways we can do it. One is to look at age groups, right? So you can look at different age groups, uh, primarily looking at. Uh, uh, so we are looking at the demography of the city. We are looking at uh, different age groups. And we're saying, what are the needs of different age groups? And then let's, you know, tailor or develop strategies to reach people in different age groups. Another way we can uh, develop strategies is by looking at areas of need, right? looking at areas of need. So this is where uh, you would also take into account um, uh, different cultural uh, cultures in the city because different cultures will have different needs. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. And of course, there are needs that are common to people across cultures, right? So uh, you try to identify what are the needs in the city and what the needs does God want us to address and how should we go about addressing them, right? That's another way to develop strategy. And, and we'll share with you some examples that in these areas. A third way to develop strategy is to look at the different spheres of activity. So this is more of, uh, you know, what are people in the city doing? Uh, where are they spending most of their time? So obviously, working people will spend most of their time at their workplaces. But what are the main activities that are happening in the city? Well, maybe in terms of industry, in terms of, uh, you know, the different spheres, we will talk about that. So you can tailor, you know, strategies that are reaching people in their spheres of activity. That is where they spend most of their time uh, uh, during the week uh, in their workplaces. And so these strategies can reach people where they are. Uh, another way to develop strategies is to use tools that are available. Right? Of course, these tools will change over time. You know, the tools that we have available to us today uh, may not have been there 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So we have the advantage of uh, making use of these tools uh, as we are reaching people, right? So there are four different, at least broadly speaking, there are four different ways in which we can develop strategies uh, to reach people in urban contexts. And uh, uh, point number five is simply, you know, the, the, the whole... Uh, uh, the uh, the most important way uh, is to uh, equip believers to engage in evangelism. While we can develop these, um, you know, we can develop strategies, and these are important. Uh, uh, what we, as a local church, what we must do is we must equip our people so that they can evangelize, they can reach out to others uh, as part of their own uh, everyday life. So we just call it lifestyle evangelism, so that whenever they get a chance, they can minister to people, pray with people, and evangelize. Right? And that's that's most important because um, ultimately it's God's people, believers, who are going to evangelize, who are going to share the gospel with others. And so we equip them, they will be able to do uh, a better work in evangelism. So what I want to do is uh, just share some of some of the practical things that uh, you know we can do, or which we have been doing here in Bangalore at APC, and, uh, uh, and 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 you know just to give you idea, just to give you look. This is how we can do it. Now, 
while I'm sharing these things, uh, we are all mindful that, uh, you know, we, we just can't necessarily do the same things everywhere else, right? That's not the point in sharing these these strategies. Um, the main point is to say that, hey, here's an example. This is how you can think. This is how you, you know, God may lead you to do strat uh, develop strategies. But what you have to do is you have to develop strategies that are relevant to your place, right? Where, which city you are in, uh, which place you are in, uh, what are the needs there, uh, how are people, you know, engaged there, right? So uh, whatever I share, I'm not expecting you to uh, replicate exactly in your cities. That's not the point. The point is just to give you an idea. And, and then you pray and you see how God would want you to do it in your city, what the strategies uh, God would lead you to use in your area. Okay, uh, let me pause here and see if there are any questions before I go forward. Is everyone with me so far? Okay. Any questions so far? All right. I am okay. I'm just looking at the chat to see that uh, everyone's fine. Okay, so I'll just go forward here and uh, maybe I'll pause a little later for any additional questions. All right, so let's go back to the PDF and um, let's, you know, okay, let's. So when you talk about age groups, of course, we'll say there are children, there are youth, uh, there are young adults. Uh, there are middle-aged people, and then there are also, you know, what we refer to as elderly people. You know, so you could, um, you know, you can think of people in their different uh, age groups, right? Uh, and uh, and then say, okay, uh, what are their needs, and uh, how can we minister to them, right? How can we reach them? What are some opportunities that we could use? So, for children, so we basically we're talking about children in schools, right? Uh, how do we uh, uh, how do we reach them? What would be the best way? Now, of course, uh, in the church we have our children's church. That is for children who are already coming to the church, right? So, um, right from the time you start a local church, you plant a church. Uh, you should think about starting, you know, what we call as a children's church or a Sunday school or a kids' church. You know, people use different uh, uh, terms. That's fine. But it's important that as you start, uh, as you plant the local church, uh, you're also having something as part of the church that is catering to children. And this is most often it would be children of parents who are already attending your congregation or coming to the church plant. So you've started a church, uh, some families have started coming and they have children. And to serve those children, you have children's church or kids church or Sunday school, whatever you call it. So that is fine. So that is one important thing, you know, so that you're continuing to give to them. But what about children out there, out there in the city who don't come to uh, uh, church or who don't come, whose parents don't come to church or who may not be coming to children's church on Sundays. How can you reach them? How can you serve them? So, uh, so we're talking about, you know, children below 18 years and uh, uh, what is commonly said or referred to as the 10, 10 14 window. That is uh children in the ages of 10 to 14 are, you know, um, uh, well, let me put it like this. If we can impact children in that age range between 10 to 14, uh, that is the most uh, impactful time to share the gospel and to lead them to, a faith, to the faith, which will stay with them for the long term. So when, when, uh, when, and, and you might see these studies available online that when um, 
and I'm not saying, you know, God may never, God will never touch people in other age ranges. That's not what we're saying. But just these studies have been put out that if we are able to reach children in this age group, 10 to 14, they have a higher percentage of staying in the faith through, you know, their uh, young adult years and later on in life. They have a higher percentage. So... It's commonly referred to as the 1014 window because of the study and the data that's there. Um, but remember, of course, we're not saying that that's the only time people are going to come to Christ. People who come to Christ at any age, at any point. But our thing is, the question we're trying to address is, how do we reach people, these children, outside? Right. So you, some of the questions we need to ask ourselves is, uh, what are some of the challenges children face? So depending on where, you know, where we are working, uh, you know, the children that we are in, in the city where we are working or in the area where we are working, you know, we ask, we should ask the question, what are some of the challenges these children are facing? And what strategies can we develop to reach these children, you know, in urban centers? Maybe you're looking at the city at, a la at large or you're looking at a particular area in the city. So these are simple questions that we need to ask, and, uh, and and the Lord will give us ideas, and the Lord will give us opportunities to reach people for our children. So, for example, uh, if you're looking at uh, in the city, there are slums, uh, especially if we're talking about in developing countries, just like like we have here in India. Um, in our cities, uh, there are many, many areas where there are slums. Uh, people are very poor, and so there are children. And there are children here, and these children have a certain set of challenges, right? So that is one way we can think about. You know, how can I serve these children? How can I help these children and the parents of these children? That's one way to look at it and say. You know, and God will give you strategies. Maybe you can uh, provide them food and clothing, or you can also provide them uh, free school lessons, uh, or uh, in a tuition classes, uh, or get them to go to a school nearby, uh, and then give them tuition. Uh, uh, most of these children may not have, uh, you know, a proper food. So at least one good meal a day or two good meals a day uh, that you provide. There are so many ways that you could address the challenges they are facing. And, uh, and you know, through that, ex expose them to the love of God. Uh, expose them to the goodness of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's one way to serve, you know, to think of strategies that can serve these people. And uh, so we're not only giving, uh, you know, uh, physical food, but we're also being able to shape their future uh, in, in their faith and uh, minister to them. Uh, what happened to us at APC is, um, uh, which year was this? I think this was in 2008. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I may not, my, my year, my me rem remembrance of these years, may not be exact, so uh, I just have to qualify that every time. Uh, but I think it was 2008. Uh, we, were, uh, we were, you know, uh, serving here in Bangalore. And of course, I, I, as a church, we had our children's church. And we were doing those kinds of things. But I think it was in that year when uh, I, I, I received a call from uh, Dr. Pinto who was the uh, he uh, the head of uh, the Ryan International Schools um, uh, and also the Xavier Group of Schools? So they have many schools across India. Uh, so I think it's more than hundred schools or something like that. Uh, and they're based in Mumbai, but they had a school here in Bangalore. In in um, uh, they have I think two or three schools here in Bangalore. Uh, and uh, he, he was here at the time in, in the school that they had in Yalanka. So I received a call and he said, come and meet me. So I went uh, and then, uh, so that time he asked, he said, um, 
uh, is there something APC can do to teach scripture to the children? And uh, uh, also, you know, do something for the teachers. Now, at that time, this was 2008, uh, APC did have, uh, you know, we did have our Sunday school ministry going on, uh, the children's church ministry going on. But we didn't have, like, I, I wouldn't call it a very strong children's ministry or anything. Uh, uh, but, you know, when he asked me, I just felt in my heart, hey, this is a door God is opening. Uh, and right there sitting, you know, in conversation with him, I said, sure, we'll take it up. I'll come back to you with a plan. We will do it. Uh, but, you know, basically I had nothing in front of me. It was just a, like a white sheet of paper saying, come and do scripture for all our, for our students in school. And, uh, I, you know, I, there was no person that I could think of or there was no, uh, nothing, you know, but I, I just said, okay, this God is opening a door. We're going to go through it. So it happened in, in kind of an unexpected way because it wasn't something we planned or we were strategizing. But the moment the door opened, we recognized the opportunity and we said, we're going to do it. So I said, oh, okay, so what are we going to do? We need somebody who's going to go to the school and who's going to teach scripture to the children. Uh, you know, they would give us time uh, as part of the regular uh, weekly uh, class schedule, and somebody has to go and teach scripture. Uh, as well, yeah. So uh, we looked around. I mean, we just uh, I don't I don't think we even did any advertising. Right at that time, somebody said, "Hey, there's this person who has been doing some kind of ministry like that," and this was um, Pastor Selena McQuana. And um, you know, it was okay. We asked her to send a resume. Yeah, she she graduated out of seminary and. Um, she was already working with children. So she already had that background and it was a good fit. So uh, actually I was really amazed how um, a door was opened and a person was also sent to us. It was literally God was uh, setting the whole thing up. So I, I spoke to Selena. I said, Selena, look, this is the opportunity, but here's the vision. This is opportunity to one school. But if we can do it in one school, we can do it in many more schools. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the mission here is for you to design a curriculum that we can teach scripture to all children from, uh, I think it was like grade two to grade 12, you know, just teach everyone, all of them. So you need to design a curriculum where we can do, do that. Uh, get a team of people, whether it's volunteers or paid people, paid staff who can be a part of this. And then, you start in this one school, but then replicate it in as many schools as possible in Bangalore. That's the goal, right? So when we started, we started with this vision that, uh, look, God has opened us a door of opportunity in one school, but it is very simple that if you can do it in one school, you can do it in many schools. So let's build for that. Let's plan for that. And so, you know, uh, uh, we just started. So with Selena, then um, uh, we announced in church, we got a group of volunteers. We got, I don't know, we did have at different points in time, you know, um, uh, paid staff also. So we had a, some volunteers, some paid staff, along with Selena, who would, uh, you know, Monday to Friday, they would be busy in the schools, uh, going and teaching scripture. And so, you know, from one school, we contacted um, other schools in Bangalore. We, we told them this is, we gave it a name. Uh, we called it Catalyst. And, uh, you know, we had a little write, write up about what it is and what we're going to do. And so we approached many other schools. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 several other schools opened up. And uh, so it started growing. Right? And I, and I, I forget again which year this was, but at one point, Catalyst grew to where we were speaking, our team, so we had a team of people, uh, we were speaking to 20,000 students every week. Uh, our team was speaking 20,000 students every week, and I think this was across six or seven schools, something like that. My numbers may be a little off, but I know that it grew to this extent. And can you imagine every week, uh, we had the opportunity to speak to 20,000 students. 
and teaching scripture. So we had a curriculum. We would take them through Bibles, uh, you know, stories from the Bible uh, and show them what it means. And of course, through all of that, you know, we bring the, the gospel. We share Jesus with them. And then at some point, we also decided to change. Um, and, and this was done on the request of the school uh, from grades 8 to 12 as value education. So they wanted something different. And they wanted it to be called as value education. But the principle was the same. That is, uh, we are bringing the word of God to teach them good values uh, from that perspective. And, uh, it, and of course, using the word of God, we teach them values that would help build their character and prepare them for life. Uh, and so, you know, uh, now, of course, there were some restrictions. We couldn't distribute. We we're not allowed to distribute Bibles uh, uh, because these are all children. They're coming to school. So, you know, we didn't do all of that. It was just scripture classes or value education, but from scripture, from the Bible, uh, if children wanted Bibles, then they would have to get a written permission uh, from their parents. And if they got permission, then we would give them Bibles if they if they wanted it. So we did that. Uh, and there were some students who wanted, so we could provide it for them with permission. So uh, it was it was you know a, a, a very nice program, and many students were impacted. Now, of course, these students are not going to come to church. Because you know, of the age, they all below eighteen, and they're dependent on their parents. But uh, while they're journeying through school, they are exposed to scripture. They're exposed to stories of the Bible. They're exposed to the gospel. They are exposed to you know the teachings, the values of the scripture, and so it was a wonderful ministry. And that went on till uh, two thousand eight. I think it was just one year uh, in uh, 2018, I think is when we, we put a pause on it um, because of course we had a lot of um, had people working and then we had people you know, moving on. So 2018, we put a pause uh, and we said, okay, we will take a break for one year and then continue on the next academic year. But then there was the uh, whole pandemic and we couldn't... Uh, get it going. So I think one year bef uh, before the pandemic started, we also, we put a pause on the Catalyst program. So I think in effect, we ran it for 10 years. And, uh, you know, for 10 years, every academic year, uh, these things would be done for students. So it was a wonderful way to reach students, children who were outside, you know, the regular kids' church service. And so um, uh, now, we, you know, when things resume, we will definitely pick up this program and take it back to the schools and um, and uh, and uh, begin to, you know, serve the students and bring bring the word of God to students. Right. So uh, I just wanted to share that example as one way in which we can reach children outside the church. Um, and, and I know of other organizations who are doing the earlier uh, idea that I shared about uh, children in the slums. You know, so they are actually serving children in the slums with these with these kinds of approach of caring for them, providing for them tuition, education, and, uh, and then exposing them to uh, the scriptures. Okay, so let me pause you and see if anybody has any questions, or any comments. Um, uh, you are following with me so far. Any questions? Okay. So, um, so that's one way. I'm just sharing this with you so that you can think about, you know, perhaps in your city, in your area, uh, maybe something like this could be done, right? Uh, uh, you know, maybe once you know this, after this this whole lock, lockdown restrictions are removed, and uh, you know, some point in the near future when students are able to get back to school and those kinds of things, maybe you know, uh, you can exp um, you could explore in schools nearby, in schools uh, where you are, that uh, you could think about reaching uh, children. 
uh, through script, teaching scripture. Uh, you could go to our church website, and I think uh, some of this curriculum might be available in our church website under the ministries. You look at Catalyst or Children's Church, uh, different resources available. You could use it and uh, you can think about, you know, uh, reaching children in your area, in your region, right? And it may be teaching scripture or it may be doing something else, maybe providing some sort of a vocational skill or some sort of a seminar, whatever, you know, you could begin to reach people, okay? So then similarly, when you think about the youth and you're thinking about, uh, uh, okay, let me just add one more, one more thought here as far as children are concerned. Um, or maybe that would be in different needs. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll talk about that in, under the area of needs. Let's just talk about you know youth right now. So we're talking about you know people who've, who've gone out of school, who are in college, and who are getting into their first job. So they're kind of transitioning. They've transitioned out of school. They're in college, and you know somewhere right after that, around 21 to 25, depending whether they're doing, going to do their masters or just the bachelors, uh, they would then transition into their first job in the workplace, right? So again, we ask these similar questions, you know, how would we describe urban youth? Uh, and of course, this would be, you have to look at it in your context, in your urban area, in your center. Um, how do you describe them? Now, what are they going through? And so you talk about things like what are their aspirations? Because now they've come to a place where they're going to think about their life, their future, what they want to do. They're on that stage. So, you know, you ask questions, what are their aspirations? What are their apprehensions? What, what are they afraid of? What are their app apprehensions? Right? Uh, what are things that are probably holding them back or majority of them? And so what can we uh, do uh, what strategies can be developed to reach youth in urban centers? So we're asking questions that would help us develop strategies for people in this age group, right? 18 to 25, the youth in the, in the city. So uh, take a look at the youth around you, around where you are, and uh, ask these questions. Now, what are some of the challenges? Uh, some of these may be similar from city to city, and some of them may be very unique to the city that you're living in, or uh, maybe something very peculiar to uh, the youth that you are you know, surrounded by, with, uh, their challenges, uh, and their apprehensions, and so on. So, um, you know, uh, there are studies, things that are online that have been put out about different generations. That could, this is depending on the generation which they were, the decade in which they were born. Uh, they refer to them as Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Z. And uh, for them, uh, there's a lot of uh, studies that are put out on, okay, these are the challenges they would face when they come into the workplace. These are their characteristics or traits. So that those are generalizations, of course, uh, but it's good to know uh, some information about the generations that are born in, uh, the people who are born in these different generations. What are some of their characteristics, right? So uh, the point I want to get across is that it's good to take some time to understand the youth that surround you, um, that you are going to reach out to, uh, to see what their needs are and how do we go about uh, reaching them, right? And uh, then from there, we can begin to come up with various strategies on how to reach them, right? Um, maybe it's, you know, seminars, uh, coffee day kinds of events. Uh, and I will, I will talk more about these uh, perhaps tomorrow. Uh, in, in, in what we did, right, at APC, uh, when we try to reach uh, young people, uh, you know, how we could uh, go about uh, thinking about them and reaching them. 
working. I will share some practical things uh, in the class tomorrow. But uh, take some time to think about the youth and uh, what are their needs, what are their challenges, and what strategies you can use to reach them in your city or in your area. Okay, so let me pause on that for now. Uh, I, I get into some uh, practical things that we did here and uh, in Bangalore. Of course, a lot of these things are on hold uh, for the last uh, one and a half years. Uh, a few of these things have been moved, or rather I shouldn't say few, but one of these things have been moved online, one or two of these things. Uh, but most of these things are on hold. But I can talk about what we did prior to the pandemic, and then we will have to develop a plan on, okay, uh, how do we get back to things uh, post the pandemic, you know, in the near future. Okay, so I'm going to pause here uh, for today. Uh, I hope this was useful. Any questions, any thoughts? Okay. All right, so tomorrow, now we'll just continue uh, this and we'll talk about some strategies for the youth, uh, things that we have uh, been doing here in Bangalore and, uh, you know, in a similar way. Right? You can think about the place where you are, what you can do, and you could start preparing for the post-pandemic phase. That means, uh, okay, you know, at this moment, um, there are limitations, yes. You cannot go out freely and, uh, you know, reach people. Uh, but uh, hopefully in the near future, when things open up, you know, uh, we should be ready to get out there and start reaching people uh, uh, and, and do some things to uh, evangelize, okay? So let's uh, close in prayer. If there are no questions. Um, I'll just um, ask uh, maybe Thomas to pray with us and close and dismiss us, please. Sure, Pastor. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful time of learning, Father. We thank you for your mercy and grace, Daddy. As we're learning about the church ministry, Father, about the children and youths, how can we reach to the people those who cannot come to the church, Father, thank you for the understanding, Father. Help us to apply in our ministries and see the fruit in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you for this mm -hmm. time. We thank you for everyone. We thank you for Pastor Ashish. We bless you, Daddy. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll, catch, we'll meet up again tomorrow. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor.